Hey Rayleigh and anyone else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. Continuing through Genesis today and we're picking up with uh, where we left off with uh, Abraham and uh, his son and we'll look at uh, a little bit of the test with Isaac. Um, now remember what this is coming off of is the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, Abraham and Sarah and King Abimelech um, and then also the birth, birth of Isaac. So that long-awaited promise that um, that Abraham had been waiting for. I say long, but really uh, we were looking at that for like a year, right? God said in a year, uh, this time next year, uh, you'll have a son. Um, and so patiently waiting for that. And yet also not patiently waiting. Um, so waiting for God's promise to be fulfilled. Yet also he was trying to do it on his own as well um, through Hagar. Um, but today again, Abraham's test, uh, Sarah's death, and then finally, Isaac and Rebecca. So the, all of that is going to be Genesis 22 through 24. <clears throat> so chapter 22. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains. And I will on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they had reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on that mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all the nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants, and they set off together for Beersheba, and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Sometime later, Abraham was told, Milcah is also a mother. She has borne sons to your brother Nahor, Uz the firstborn, Uz his brother, Kemul the father of Amram, Aram, Kesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jil, Jidlaf, and Bethul. Bethul became the father of Rebekah. Milcah bore these eight sons to Abraham's brother Nahor. His concubine, whose name was Remua, also had sons, Teba, Gehan, Tahash, and Makah. Chapter 23. Sarah lived to be 127 years old. She died at Kirath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. Then Abraham rose from beside his dead wife and spoke to the Hittites. He said, I am an alien and a stranger among you. Sell me some property for the burial site here so I can bury my dead. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Sir, listen to us. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of tombs. None of us will refuse you his tomb for burying your dead. Then Abraham rose and bowed down before the people of the land, the Hittites. He said to them, If you are willing to let me bury my dead, then listen to me and intercede with Ephron, son of Zoar, on my behalf. 
he will so that he will sell me the cave of Mechpelah, which belongs to him and is at the end of his field. Ask him to sell it to me for the full price as the burial site among you. Ephron the Hittite was sitting among his people and replied to Abraham in the hearing of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of his city. No, my lord, he said, listen to me. I give you this field. I give you the cave and that I give you the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of my people. Bury your dead. Again, Abraham bowed down before the people of the land. He said to Ephron in their hearing, listen to me, if you will. I will pay the price for the field. Accept it from me so I can bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham, Listen to me, my lord. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. But what is that between me and you? Bury your dead. Abraham agreed to Ephron's terms and weighed out for him the price he named in the hearing of the Hittites, 400 shekels of silver, according to the weight current among the merchants. So Ephron's field at Mechpelah near Marme, both the field and the cave in it, and all the trees within the borders of the field was deeded to Abraham and his property in the presence of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. Afterward, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of Mechpelah near Marme, which is at Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave in it were deeded to Abraham by the Hittites as a burial site. Chapter 24 Abraham was now well old and well advanced in years, and the Lord blessed him in every way. He said to the chief servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife from my son, from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife from my son Isaac. The servant asked him, What if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you are from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me an oath, saying to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you are to be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and left, taking with him all kinds of good things from his master. He set out for Amram Neharim and made his way to the town of Nahor. He had the camels kneel down the well outside the town. It was toward evening, the time the woman went out to draw the water. Then he prayed, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, give me success today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a girl, please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, drink and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one that you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebekah, came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother, Nahor. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever lain with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said to her, Please give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too, and they'll until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran back to the well to draw more water, and drew enough for all his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring weighing a becca and two gold bracelets weighing ten shekels. Then he asked, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me. Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, bore to Nahor. And she added, We have plenty of straw and fodder, as well as room for you to spend the night. Then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord, saying, Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. The girl ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now, Rebekah had a brother named Laban, and he hurried out to see the man at the spring. As soon as he had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's arms, 
and had heard Rebekah tell, tell what the man had said to her, he went out to the man and found him standing by the camels near the spring. Come, are you who are you who are blessed by the Lord? He said, why are you standing out here? I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man went into the house and the camels were unloaded. Straw and fodder were brought for the camels and water for him and his men to wash their feet. Then food was set before him. But he said, I will not eat until I have told you what I have to say. Then tell us, Laban said. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master abundantly, and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, men servants and maid servants, and camels and donkeys. My master's wife, Sarah, has borne him a son in her old age, and he has given him everything he owns. And my master made me swear an oath and said, you must not get a wife from my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but go to my father's family and to my own clan and get a wife from my son. Then I asked my master, what if the woman will not come back with me? He replied, the Lord before whom I have walked will send his angel with you and make your journey a success so that you can get a wife from my son, from my own clan and from my father's family. Then when you go to my clan, you will be released from my oath. Even if they refuse to give her to you, you will be released from my oath. When I came to the spring today, I said, O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, if you will, please grant success to the journey on which I have come. See, I am standing beside the spring. If a maiden comes out to draw water, and I say to her, please give me a little water from your jar. And if she says to me, drink, and I'll draw water for your camels too. Let her be the one the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Before I finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water, and I said to her, please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I'll water your camels too. So I drank, and she watered the camels also. I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, whom Milcah bore to him. Then I put the ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arms, and I bowed down and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me on the road, on the right road, to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may know which way to turn. Laban and Bethuel answered, This is from the Lord. We can say nothing to you one way or the other. Here is Rebekah. Take her and go, and let her become the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. When Abraham's servant heard what they had said, he bowed down to the ground before the Lord. Then the servant brought out the oil and the silver and jewelry and articles of clothing and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and to her mother. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. When they got up the next morning, he said, send me on my way to my master. But her brother and her mother replied, let the girl remain with us ten days or so, then you may go. But he said to them, Do not detain me now. Now that the Lord has granted success to my journey, send me on my way so that I may go to my master. Then they said, Let's call the girl and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, Will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way, along with their nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our master, may you increase to thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the gates of their enemies. Then Rebecca and her maids got ready and mounted their camels and went back with the man. So the servant took Rebecca and left. Now Isaac had come from Bir Laharoi, for he was living in the Negev. He went out to the field one evening to meditate. And as he looked up, he saw the camels approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked her servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? He is my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and he married Rebecca. So she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So we get a lot there with Isaac and Rebecca, but I, I think I love this story more for Abraham's um, interactions with God and with Isaac um, just during that test. And it's always so interesting. I mean, when we when we look at that that test, you kind of have to ask yourself a couple different questions. But um, I think one of the main questions is, did God know? Would God have known that Abraham was willing to give up his son? Because even the text says, now I know that um, you are going to do this. Well, I believe that God already knew. I think he said that for Abraham's benefit, that 
that for so Abraham had that understanding of, hey, God knows my heart. I mean, David talks about that a lot. And if God knows already what's in our heart and what's in our heads um, and our thoughts and stuff, God already knew what Abraham was going to do. So why the test? Why would God test Abraham like that? What benefit could there possibly be? Well, I can think of a couple. Um, looking at that, Abraham can see now this is what God does for his faithful. This is what God does for the people that remain faithful to him and people that have faith. I mean, Abraham even says to the servants before he goes up on the mountain, we are going to go up into sacrifice. We are going to go up into sacrifice and then we will return to you. So it's as if he knew God was going to stop him or that God would revive him um, or that's what he was trusting on. Now, maybe God wouldn't and maybe God would let him kill Isaac, but he knew that a a descendant was going to come through his line. And God is still merciful, even though God may test us. God is still merciful and stops his hand um, and blesses him greatly because of that uh, belief. So I guess that's my prayer for you is having that faith like Abraham, um, that even though it may seem so confusing and even though you may not have the answer, just what we talked about yesterday is have faith in God, have patience and faith that God has the very best plan for you. And that may not be a plan that you always understand, but it will be a plan that brings him glory. And that is so, so incredibly important. Anyway, know that I love you and I'm praying for you. I just love you so dang much. It's crazy. Um, you were eating dinner tonight and it looked like a zombie apocalypse. You had like, yeah, tons of sauce all over your face and it was absolutely adorable. Anyway, again, I uh, love you tons. And uh, for anyone else watching, know that I appreciate you as well. Love you guys. See you tomorrow.